All right, so in this video, we're checking out the Valo Trek Discover 2. Uh, this is an, like a, I guess a premium type e-bike. Uh, comes there kind of slightly premium price tag as well. I guess we'll have to decide at the end of this video if this is actually worth it or not. Personally, after riding it for a little while, it's a very nice bike. Probably one of the nicest uh, e-bikes I've actually ridden. I've, I've reviewed quite a few of these. But let's go over all of the specs and features here. So we're obviously dealing with some bigger tires here. These are some 27 and a half inch by 2.4 inch Kenda tires. And we're dealing with uh, basically road type of tire, not, not really off-roading. So uh, if you're looking for an off-road bike, this is not it. This is more of a, a road bike, city bike, urban traveler, uh, bike path, concrete, asphalt, that kind of thing. Um, in the rear here, we have a 750 watt motor. It does burst to, I believe, 1100 watts. It's 48 volts. And it's paired with a very nice big battery here. It's 48 volts, 705.6 watt hours. So pretty big battery. It's rated up to 75 miles of range. Uh, and this is UL certified. So for those of you you know, looking for a, a high quality battery with I think these have either LG or Samsung 21700 cells in there. Uh, high quality battery, UL rated, so less worry about um, a battery fire when you're charging. This is one of those really nice ones and the battery is on the uh, top side here so it's not gonna fall out of the bottom, it's pretty nice. So instead of the usual cadence sensor, this one has a torque sensor and we have a bunch of uh, riding modes that are mated to this torque sensor. It gives you different acceleration curves. We'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about the bike computer. Got a nice uh, rear rack here and we got a rear brake light. It includes turn lights as well, turn signals, uh, metal fenders here in the rear and in the front. Very nice hydraulic. Uh, suspension in the front here with 80 millimeters of travel, a uh, lockout and adjustment. So while the typical front suspension is going to be like coil based, this is a bit of an upgrade is hydraulic based. Same with the uh, torque sensor. A lot of the e-bikes that I've uh, reviewed in the past are cadence sensor. That's a cheaper uh, version. The, the torque sensor is going to be pricier and, and it's all included in the higher price tag. And just like a lot of the other Valtric e-bikes, it does have the uh, Apple Find My feature. So you can uh, use an Apple phone to set it up and uh, in case this uh, bike is lost or stolen, you can locate it uh, with uh, the Apple Find My app. Uh, however, you do need an iPhone to set it up. Uh, it will work with an Android phone, but you do need an iPhone to set up. If you don't have an iPhone to set it up, it will not work with an Android phone, so it's a little bit of a downside. Got a very comfortable seat here, very wide. Uh, good amount of cushion. Should be able to ride this for a fair amount of time, and it, it is a height adjustable. The frame here is the large frame, so I'm a taller person, I'm six feet tall, so I opted for the large frame. Got an L sticker here. And uh, I'll put up on the screen the rider heights for the large frame versus the regular frame. For if you're rig if you're a shorter rider, you want to opt for the regular frames to the large frame. So also on this side we have a eight-speed Shimano Altus derailleur. So instead of seven speeds, we have eight speeds here. In the front here we have a very bright 130 lux headlights, much brighter than you'll find on a lot of budget e-bikes. So in the front here we have a 180 millimeter rotor. Uh, made it to some Tektro two-piston uh, hydraulic disc brakes. Got the same uh, 180 millimeter rotors in the back as well and hydraulic disc brakes as well. All right, going to the handlebar here. It's kind of a kind of sloped back handlebar here. So you are going to be able to sit upright on the bike without leaning over. You can hear the uh, Tektro hydraulic brake handles, brake levers. Got your controller here. Got a whole bunch of stuff going on. So. Uh, left and right for your, uh, I think these are the turn signals. You can press that, it'll activate it, press it in to deactivate it. Got a power button here on top, mode button here, plus and minus on your pedal assist levels. Got a walking mode and headlight button. Very nice bright display here. Let's go ahead and turn this on. You can see here that even in bright sunlight, very easy to read. Got your battery level, 
uh, just your different modes here. So it's on boost right now. Now you press the uh, menu button here in the bottom to switch your modes. Eco, trail, and boost. And then within each of those modes, you have different levels of pedal assist. You have zero, obviously, for no pedal assist. And then you're gonna use the uh, plus and minus buttons here to increase that save. All the way up to five. And you have five levels of pedal assist on each of the modes. And each one of these has a slightly different acceleration feel. Boost is gonna give you the most acceleration if you want to conserve battery. Uh, go to Eco. And then if you're doing a little bit of off-roading, I think Trail gives you a little bit more torque. Um, the motor does uh, have a maximum torque rating of 75 Newton meters. And you got some other information here on the bottom. Press the M button to cycle through that. You got your odometer, trip distance, average speed, etc. And then you got your main speed here in the center. You can also connect the bike computer to the app on your smartphone, but uh, all of the features that you can control via the uh, bike computer you can see in the app. So it's kind of redundant. It doesn't really add that much value. So, um, so basically that's why I'm not showing it to you. There's not really anything there that uh, any features that it adds that you can't already do through the bike computer. And I just want to let you know that I do have all standard settings on here except for one thing. I did change the throttle limiter. So we'll go into the menu here. I also did change the speed limit as well. So you go into, you basically long press the M button to get into the menu. And here you can adjust your settings to go into speed limit. And I changed it to 28 miles per hour. Um, it came 20 miles per hour out of the box. So you can adjust your speed here. You can even go lower. I think you can go down to 12 miles per hour. So if you want to um, reduce the speed limit, you can do that. But I'm gonna go 28 to get the maximum performance. Go ahead and save that. And then the other thing that I changed was the throttle limiter, or throttle limited. So if we go in here, I turned that off and with, with it, it's on by default. And what that does is when you hit the throttle, it limits you to the speed that is um, uh, on the pedal assist level. So go ahead and I'm gonna get out of here. And let's get back out. So if you're in, say, pedal assist level one, um, it may have a maximum speed of, say, 15 miles per hour. And then when you hit the throttle in that level, that's the maximum speed you're going to get. So I turned that off so that when I hit the throttle, I'll get the full power and I'll get the maximum speed. It's kind of nice to have that because uh, in some situations you might want to be in a lower level of throttle and just pedaling. So you don't mind going slower, but then you may need to burst speed by accident, you know, just for an emergency, and then you get the throttle and go faster. Um, you can't do that with that um, in the default mode, so I turned that off. Got a trigger shifter here for the eight-speed derailleur in the back. So there's a front and a back trigger here to go up and down. And you got these nice ergonomic grips. These are the same ones that are on the fold that you saw in the previous video for the, from the previous bike video that I reviewed from Velotrek. So the uh, bike has a weight rating of 440 pounds. So it definitely can carry plenty of people and cargo. The bike weighs about 63 pounds, so a little bit on the heavier side. All right, so it looks pretty good overall. Let's go ahead and give it a ride test. I'll do your standard riding and speed test, and I'll talk about it as I'm riding around. So just a quick word on the packaging and shipping of the bike. As uh, always, uh, Valtrek ships their bikes very well packed. Uh, all the accessories come in nice little boxes. It's very well organized. Uh, the manuals are very detailed and easy to understand. But there is a build video on the product page. So if you go there, uh, the link will be in the description. If you want a more detailed video on how to put the bike together, uh, head on down there. It's the only thing that's really that complicated is the front wheel, but the video does describe that in pretty good detail. So I would recommend watching that video in case you have any trouble putting the bike together. All right, so we'll start the um, speed test here. Um, gonna do each of the different five levels and each of the different modes. Gonna think we're gonna have different levels of acceleration. So eco, pedal assist level one. We'll see here what we get in terms of speed. So the, the uh, torque sensor is just gonna provide enough power 
based on the effort you're putting in. So it's a little bit different from the cadence sensor. So we're going to be not a lot of power here. Obviously, this mode here is going to save the most battery, give you the most range. And going like nine miles an hour in pedals level one. So let's go to level two. We get a little bit more speed here. Not much, nine and a half. And I think with the uh, torque sensor, if I provide more effort, I can go faster. So I'm just providing kind of a minimal amount of effort here just to see um, how much power is being provided by the bike versus the, the, the actual rider. All right, so let's go ahead and turn around. Let's go to level three. Should get a little bit more speed now. So I can tell that in eco mode, it's, the motor is not providing a lot of power. And actually, I'm not going that fast, like eight and a half miles an hour. Level three, let's go to level four. A little bit faster. 9.3 miles per hour, let's go level five. So again, I'm not providing a lot of effort here, kind of minimal effort, seeing how much the bike's gonna help me out. Not going that fast, like 9.0 now, but I can go faster if I provide more effort. So I'm going 12, but that's not the point of this test, so. Go ahead and turn around. So definitely can go faster, but I'm providing very minimal effort here. Let's go ahead and switch it to trail mode and go down to level one here on pedal assist. Let's see if we get a little bit more power. I can feel just a little bit more power now from the motor. So with more power from the motor, uh, it's gonna eat your battery a little faster and reduce your range, but going much faster now in trail level one already up to like 11.4 miles per hour Let's go level two a little bit faster 12 ish level three and not much faster in level three, 11.4 still. Let's go ahead and turn around. All right, go to level four now. Still not that much faster, 11 something. Let's go to level five. Uh, still about 11 something. So I think we're kind of limited by the gear win. Let's go ahead and let's uh, gear up here. So if I gear up, yeah, not that much faster. Again, I am a little bit limited by how much effort I'm putting in. All right, let's go to um, boost mode and we're to level one. Yeah, I can definitely feel that it's providing a little bit more power than in the trail mode. And gear all the way up here. So I think uh, the gearing does have a, is a factor here in the top speed you're gonna get. So I'm getting 16. But again, I'm not providing a lot of effort here. I could go faster for sure if I provided more effort myself. All right, so let me just see here what the different acceleration levels are on throttle only. Right, going back to Eco. 
A very gentle acceleration curve here. You can see the acceleration curve on the uh, bike computer. It just kind of creeps up real slow. And now we're getting much faster speeds, but it's a very slow acceleration. 22, 23. So it'll go all the way up to the max 28 miles per hour, but it accelerates uh, pretty slowly, but that also saves the battery. Well, let's go to trail. Let's see how this accelerates. It's definitely a little bit, a little bit more acceleration. Gets up to speed much faster. 26. 27. 28. Whew. All right, that's fast. That is very fast. And let's go to boost. So this is probably going to provide the quickest acceleration. Definitely a little bit more. We're already up to 21. 22. So it gets up to fast, up to speed a lot here. 25. 25. All right, let's try that one more time. I am going into the wind there, so. Twenty-two, twenty-five, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-eight point three. Yep. Okay, going into the wind actually does limit you your speed a little bit. So basically the different modes, eco, trail, and boost provide different levels of acceleration. Eco is the least amount of acceleration and boost is the most. So when you're using the throttle or pedal assist, it provides more motor power uh, when you're at lower speeds, so you can get up to speed quicker. So if you like jack racket, jack rabbit acceleration, then you want to be on boost. Of course, that also reduces your range and eats into your battery a lot faster the more you use boost. And if you want to increase your range, uh, eat less battery, then put it on eco if you don't care about, you know, going maximum, maximum speed. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this back in eco and enjoy some nice cruising around here. I'll talk about the bike, how I feel about it. Uh, it is one, uh, one of the nicest uh, e-bikes I have uh, reviewed, and I've reviewed quite a few of these. Definitely, I would call this a premium e-bike. Uh, it's got the torque sensor, it's got the hydraulic disc brakes, you've got the hydraulic front suspension, I've uh, got an upgraded seat here. Um, very comfortable. I, I would, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't uh, worry about riding this for hours on end. Definitely not a problem. Um, you know, the, all the components on here are very nice, very uh, configurable via the bike computer. The app is kind of, I don't know, my point, kind of useless at this point. It could be used for some other stuff, but. Uh, the Find My feature is nice if you have an iPhone so that if you do happen to misplace your bike or lose it or if it's stolen, you can track it down. The uh, fact that it doesn't work with an Android phone is a bit of a bummer. I am kind of miffed by that because I don't have any iPhones. I only have Android phones and Android devices, so kind of unhappy about that. But, you know, what can you do? That's an Apple feature, not an Android feature. but. I believe there's a Android version of that, and I think it's called Find My Device. So perhaps they could incorporate that into maybe a future firmware update on the bike. That would be very nice. Uh, then you can use your Android phone to track down the bike in case you lose it. But uh, yeah, in terms of comfort, you know, five stars on this one. 
Very, very comfortable, uh, very comfortable ride, easy to ride, you don't have to provide a lot of effort. And I like the torque sensor. It, it feels like you are providing a little bit more effort than you would, let's say, a cadence sensor type of bike. Um, but it's more in line with the amount of effort you're putting in versus if you were using a cadence sensor bike, it just gives you like full motor power no matter how much effort you're putting in. So it doesn't feel like you're actually riding a bike. That's kind of the difference between this one and a lot of other e-bikes. It just feels more like a regular bike versus an, uh, basically yeah, a, 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 a motor powered bicycle, which is a little bit different. So this does come in different colors. If you're interested in mint green, there's a different color and there's a crimson red and also a stone gray. I personally like this one here. It's kind of like a forest green. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, kind of green is called. I think forest green is the color. Put up on the screen here in case I've uh, forgotten what it's actually called, but I like this color. Other colors are available, you know, and uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm very impressed with Valatrix bikes. Uh, I've reviewed three of them and all of them have been top of my list. And yeah, check out my Fold 1 review. Uh, let's put that out uh, about a month ago. And if you're looking for a folding bike, maybe a little bit smaller and lighter, more transportable than this one, uh, that one is uh, very nice as well. And it's got some very similar features. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit more transportable so you can put it in a car whereas this one's going to be a little bit more hard to get around because you do need a bike rack on the back of your car or SUV. Anyway, that's going to cover this video. The link will be in the uh, video description down below. You can check out the rest of the specs and features on their product page. And, and again, I might have a coupon code down there depending upon whether they're, when you're watching this, you know, sometimes they provide coupon codes at random times. I'll stick it down there. Maybe they'll have a sale going on, etc. That'll do it for this video. Got any questions? Let me know down in the comment section below. Talk to you guys in the next video.